appreciate your presence. We appreciate your time. And we're thrilled to know that we are moving through this 2016 together and manifesting and leaping into the greatness that lives inside of each and every one of us. So tonight we have a special treat. I'll be interviewing someone who has been working with our Platinum family. He is a John Maxwell Certified Leadership Speaker Trainer, coach, and he helps executives and marketplace leaders and senior pastors reduce stress and frustrations associated with the gap that exists with their faith in God and corporate actions and responsibilities. He has started his own Platinum Leadership of Excellence formula and shared that with others on how Christian leaders can have high performance and really sustain what they're doing in the marketplace with moral standing. He has been working alongside Mr. Brown and our Platinum Speakers for the last couple of years, expanding the work and magnifying his voice and what he is sharing with the world. So tonight, I get to introduce to you none other than Dr. Anthony T. Ladson. Dr. Ladson, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, mic check, mic check. I am so Mic check. <laughs> I'm no, I'm, I'm thrilled. Here. Yes, I'm thrilled just to be just to be one of the many platinums that have the awesomeness to share this platform and share on my message. Because this is this is like a dream come true. Oh, and, and well, we can we can go on with this. Well, I love to make dreams come true. So I am excited <laughs> that we have this chance and. Today is a big day on the press and the news talking about leap year and leaping. And I asked our callers before we got started what they're leaping into. And you made a decision to get involved with Mr. Brown to leap into taking all the work that you're doing in your platform to a new level. But in 2016, can you tell us, Dr. Latson, what are you leaping into? What is your focus on how you are going bigger, going wider, and going deeper in the impact of your platform? Wow. Thank you, Stacey. This, like I said, I just, I just want to start off with uh, saying thank you to Mr. Brown for this opportunity to share with the Monday Night Call. Everybody who's listening, thank you for showing up because since you are here, that means you have something or you have expectation of something great. And you're going to hear something great. So I just wanted to say, I just wanted to clear that out in the air. Now, you said, what am I leaping into? That's the topic of tonight. What are we, what are we leaping into or what am I leaping into to 2016? That's that right. Correct? What are we leaping? That is correct. Oh, That's what I want to find out because goodness. everybody's always looking for what next? What am I going to do next? Captain Mark was on earlier talking about working on his next novel that he is going to release to help others. And if we are focused every day on something broader and bigger, we can make this world better. So what are you leaping into? To be honest, Stacy, what I'm leaping into is discovering the real me. Mm, discovering, like the real, dis, discovering the real me because, to be honest, I'm, I, I just want to ask a question and, and, and want people to, to think about this. Who are you? Who are you? You're not your job. You're not your, 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 your title or your status. But when you think about the question, or you say to yourself, who am I? You're not your job. Because I used to be a, a bus operator for 20 years at the New York City Transit. And I also used to you know, work for Greyhound. I was the youngest Greyhound bus driver. And, and people say, well, who are you? Uh, you know, I work for the city. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad because I want people to, to, to really grasp what I'm trying to say. When you, re, when, you, when you discover who you really are, the real you, your life will get so much better because you will have a clear indication of what am I supposed to do. Because as we, are, as, as we know, everybody got goals and dreams, but sometimes your dreams are not really your dreams. Because my clients, I have a lot of clients, that I deal with and, and what, one thing that I train them on is how to live by design and not by default. How to live by design and not by default. Because a lot of people, they are living a life that somebody else designed for them. 
If your mother might have said, well, you, you look like you're a great dancer. You should go to dance school. You should be a ballerina. Or they tell Johnny, oh, you, you know, you're smart. You should be a lawyer. And you go to law school, you know, take 15 years to go to law school to get the degree. And after a while, in their heart, they're saying, I don't, I don't really want to do this. I, I want to open up a bakery. I, I wanted to, you know, open up a hardware store. And you discover who you really are by looking inside your heart, looking inside what do you love to do? What is your passion? So let's, let's, let's face it. If you don't like what you're doing, you're not called to do that thing. If you don't like what you're doing, you're not called to do that thing that you are doing every day just to make ends meet. Because when you have a job, that's what it is. J-O-B, just above broke. But when you operate in your passion, when you discover who you are, your job turns into your passion. Your passion turns into profit. And that profit turns into the wonderful life. So I say that to I say this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say that to say this. What I'm, leaping in, what I'm leaping into this 2016 is discovering the Anthony that has not yet shown up. Because, yes, I've gone to school. I have my, 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 deg my, my degree in theology. Yes, I have that. Yes, Mr. Brown has taught me how to, you know, compilate the stories and, and tell my, my signature story. Yes, I have that. John Maxwell taught me how to deal with leadership, train leaders, because leadership is influence. And I'm influencing a lot of people. Yes, I have that in my pocket. But who am I? I can equivalently say, number one, I'm a man of faith. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has delivered me, saved me. I'm not perfect. No, I'm not perfect. Far from that. But one thing I can truly say, stand on my feet. I'm a man of faith. Number two, I'm a man who know who he is. And it would take me so long just to, just, just to scratch that surface, but I just want to say, I know who I am. I know what I'm called to do. And I'm operating in my passion now. So I'm leaping into discovering the Anthony that has not yet shown up yet. You might say, well, what is he talking about? That, sometimes that doesn't make any sense. Yes, ask the question to yourself, who are you? And if you can answer that question, you don't need to listen to me anymore. But the people that cannot answer that question right now, keep on listening. Because you are doing something, you're saying, I don't feel like waking up, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning to get dressed and leave out the house 7 o'clock and then get to work 8.45 just to punch in to work 9, 10 hours. When I have in my heart, I want to be a singer. Or I have in my heart, I want to work with the youth. I want to just do something that is passionate inside my heart. That's who you really are. But as we all know, you know, you just can't just get up and just go out and, 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 and just do it and leave all your responsibilities on the table. No. There's a plan that must take place before you jump into your passion. Because, because for me, I discovered a lot of things about myself. A lot of things. And one thing I discovered that was holding me back from discovering who I, I was really, really, or who I really am, is when I was 10 years old. Because when I grew up, I grew up on a you know, single family, single parent home with my mother. And I was a bad kid. You know, I was, I was a really bad kid. You know, I was throwing <laughs> eggs in school and, you know, messing up, fighting and everything. Because, you know, I didn't have the father figure in my life. But one thing that changed my life, that I met my father at the age of 11, and, you know, we had a love-hate relationship because at the time, you know, I was doing my own thing. I wasn't listening to nobody. But he came in, he put the, you know, they say spare the rod and spoil the child. I'm going to let you know right now, I'm not, I wasn't spoiled. <laughs> he came in the picture, I wasn't spoiled. But he taught me a lot of things. And even though he taught me those things, I still was, you know, you know still rebellious. And I was so happy. I was so happy. I was like, oh, wow, you know, my father in my life. Even though I don't like the stuff, the stuff he's saying, but he's in my life. But sometimes you can take a hit when it's going good, and you're saying to yourself, wow, 
look what's happening to me. I love what's going on. But when you can take a hit and still stand, that's when you know you got firm foundation. And, and one that's day, important. I, with, I just want to interrupt you for a minute, Dare, because you are sharing quite a bit about what you're leaping into and the audience is listening and maybe relating to some of what you're sharing when it comes to identifying what you're leaping into and that time that you're taking to know yourself. You know, Les says something all the time that you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. And if you yeah. don't take the time to do that discovery that you're talking about, and you mentioned living by design and not by default, and focusing your energy around what do you want from your life, not what other people expect, not what you're trying to fashion after others that you see, but ultimately, at the end of the day, what are you going to leave as a part of your legacy? And that's really the most exciting thing I feel for us to tap into and go deeper with. So as you're talking about your progression and as you grew and, and you're going to round out those comments about how that impacted and changed your life, we want everyone listening in, leave your conversation. It's trendy. Everyone's talking about it. All those whose birthdays are today, they get to officially celebrate. But it's more than that. It's more than just the concept of leaping, but I love what you're talking about with going deeper into who you are and what it is that you are going to leave on this planet. What are you going to do differently? What are you going to add to your repertoire of greatness? You know, let's talk about the greatness that lives inside of us and encourages us each and every day to walk in that. But we really have to do what you're calling us to do is that inner work. And that's the work that I love. So I'm going to let you continue on with how the frame reference of your upbringing and who you are and how that's brought you to this point is where you're leaping to. And then I have one more question to you, pose to you before we continue on and start closing down our call tonight. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Stacey. Because because what I understand Leaping into something, sometimes you can't leap because you have those baggage holding you down. Some of those baggages, your mm -hmm. frame of mind, your perception, the way you see yourself. Because if you don't see yourself in the correct way, you can't leap with the baggage on your back or the chains on your ankles or the monkey on your back. You should say monkeys on your back. <laughs> but that gets back to my point with my father. Like I said, we had a love-hate relationship, but yet he was teaching me things I would need later on in my life. And it got to a point it was getting good. I was excited. I came home from school one day. You know, I, I got a couple of A's, and I came home from school one day, ran in the house looking for my father, and, 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 and I came in the living room, and I saw him, you know, I saw him laying on the ground. And, you know, he's a, he's a big guy like me, you know, I'm six foot, 250 pounds. And he was just laying on the ground. He wasn't moving. And I got closer. I realized he wasn't breathing. And as I got closer, I was like, well, you know, what's going on? And I, I knelt down on the carpet. We had like a shag carpet. Never forget it, shag beige carpet. And I knelt down next to him and he wasn't breathing. And I looked and I, I tried to do something, and I said, I got to do CPR. I got to do something. I got to do something. And I started to panic, and, and I looked, and I said, I got to do CPR. I got to do something. I started crying. I got to do something. And I remembered this TV show called Punky Brewster. And on that show, they had her friend Sherry. She was trapped in a refrigerator, and she came out the refrigerator, and she was like, oh, you could do do CPR, we could do CPR and save Sherry, we could save Sherry. And she did CPR, but at the time on that show, I didn't watch the show. I didn't pay attention to it because I felt, you know, it's an educational show, but it was entertaining, and I was just doing what I wanted to do. And that was a week before I see my father on the ground. Had a massive heart attack. And I'm trying to remember what she did on that show to save my father. And I'm panicking. I'm trying to find out what should I do. And I scream to my mom, Ma, come. Timmy's on the ground. He, he's not breathing. Call 911. And I looked. And I froze. 
Yeah, I, I fought. Dr. Lassen, I froze. But I had to do something. So I tried to do chest compressions five or, or four. I couldn't remember. Then I said, I got to tilt the head back. And I tilt the head back and nothing was happening. And then I looked, looked at him and I grabbed his head and I said, no, nah, don't, don't, don't die on me like this. I just met you three years ago. And what looked like hours was only minutes. The paramedics came. And I got up. I went out the room. I saw my mother crying. She's in the corner. My sister crying. Tears going on my face. And they came down and they said, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. And I held that inside of me for years. I'm the reason. I could have saved him. I was carrying that baggage that I could have saved him if I paid attention. If I just paid attention to what Punky Brewster said on the TV. If I just paid attention to four or five chest compressions or tilt his head back. If I just paid attention. Maybe he'll be here today. And that's the baggage I was carrying for a long, long time. If I just paid attention. But what happened a few years later as I was rebelling, I was fighting, I was still fighting because I was mad. I was carrying that load and I was the reason he is not here. My sister came and said, why are you crying? What was wrong with you? And I broke down. I said, I'm, I'm the reason Jimmy's not here. I'm the reason that he, he's not here. He can still be here. I, I could have saved him. I, I just, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. And she looked at me and smiled a little bit. And she was like, you, didn't, you don't know? It's like, know what? She was like, he was still alive when, when the paramedics came. He was still here. You, say, you, you saved him to the paramedics came. He was still breathing. He was still breathing. He was still, his heart was still beating when the paramedics came. And you still did something. And my mother came in the room and she was comforting me. And she was like, don't you know it's a blessing what happened to you? He was there when you were born, but you was there when he left here. And that was a release that I needed. That was a release. That was a baggage. So I say to you, what baggage are you carrying that's stopping you from leaping into your dreams? What is it that's stopping you from going after that goal you said you want to be a speaker? You want to be a doctor. You want to go out and dance like there's no tomorrow. What is it that's holding you back from leaping into 2016? Yes, it's, on, it's February 29th. It's a leap year, but it's your leap year. The 29th only comes once every four years. So this is an extra day you have to leap. So what are you leaping into? Ask yourself, what will I leap into? But first, my friend, first, you have to take off that baggage that's holding you from leaping. Take off the chains that's holding you from leaping into your destiny. The destiny that was predestined before the foundation of the world for you to walk in, but you're not walking in it because you are bound with baggage. My friend, take off the baggage, take off the chains, leap into this new year, into your destiny, into your greatness. Well, Stacey? thank you for answering that question. I love it. I love it. And our fearless leader, Mr. Brown, you know, said something that's right in line with what you shared. You know, we have to accept responsibility for our life. Know that it is you who will get you where you want to go. No one else. So you just encouraged everyone to leap let go of the baggage, move forward with the very thing that they've been desiring to do and seeking and in the spirit of this leap year observance, leap, go full out towards your goals and your dreams. 
Who cares if you get it right the first time? You might mess up two or three times. I'm sure that we can sit and tally the conversations with all of the billionaires on the planet, and they would share the same thing that you heard tonight. There's a push past the story, past the baggage, past the mistakes, and still moving forward to get the results. You can do it, and we're counting on you. So thank you so much for sharing that, Anthony. How can people stay in contact with you if they want to continue the conversation as they leap into their greatness? Well, they, they can continue the conversation. They can go to www.dranthonytlatson, that's D-R-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-T-L-A-D-S-O-N.com. Or they can text the word Anthony. Text the word Anthony, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, to 718-395-5522. That's 718-395-5522. Text the word Anthony. And all my information will come up and you, the website will come up, my, my, my email will come up, everything will come up, and you can contact me right there. Because I have something coming up that, that's just powerful, a mastermind. So if they want more information on that, they can just... You know, text the word Anthony, it'll come right up. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that and having a little conversation tonight about leaping into your greatness. And I want to close out with another one of Les's most popular quotes, and that's most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss, but because they aim too low and hit. So aim high, leap, and get it done. I have about four or five minutes if you are available to stay on the line, we can open it up to see if any of our callers have a comment or a question that they would like to share. Absolutely, Stacey. Okay. So everyone, please stand by. All callers are unmuted. All callers are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the lines are now open and available if you press star six if you have a question and or a comment tonight. Thank you, Dr. Anthony, and thank you, my sweet friend, Dr. Oh. Stacy. Oh, my Ray, great to hear your voice. Oh, thank you. Thank I was you a little late in getting on tonight, but I'm glad that you are here. Now, do you have a, a question, Ray? I know there's another caller standing by as well, but I want to make sure you get yours in. No, I don't. I just want to thank both of you. Oh, you are welcome, Ray. We love you here in the Motivational Monday Night family. And we're going to make sure you continue to leap because you have so much greatness in you. So thank you for being here, Ray. Yes, thank, thank you, Ray, you. for calling in. Okay, there's somebody else that was standing by. There's a little feedback on the line. So just check your phone. Press star six. Okay. There was somebody else that was waiting for so Star Six to meet your line. Yeah, hello. hello. Okay, go right ahead. Hey, this is Adrian from Seattle, Washington. How are you doing, Dr. Stacy and Anthony? Your conversation was wonderful, man. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I just wanted to say that, you know, this sleep year is something very special for everybody. And it reminded me of something Steve Harvey said a while back about jumping off the cliff. And when we jump off this cliff, you know, the parachute's not going to open. And you're going to get scratched up. You're going to bang up against certain things. But you got to know that eventually you're going to fly. And a lot of us in life, we're scared to jump. We're scared to take that leap, and we got to take it. And no matter what, you got to believe in you and know that you can do as much as you think you can. So I want to thank you guys for sharing that today. Well, thank you, Adrian. Thank you so much. Yes, great to hear you as always, Adrian. We're having a lot of background noise. All callers are muted. I'm not sure where the background noise was coming from, but I didn't want to continue that because I am getting up there and those kind of things unnerve me. I'm just, just like Mr. Brown. Can't take static on the line. So unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> you're not alone, I'm the same way. I'm the yeah, same so way. 
<laughs> I don't know what's happening with someone that was unmuted, but we appreciate those of you that were able to unmute your line. We thank you for being here. We want to invite you again to go to lesbrown.com and find out more information about the upcoming events and where she'll be. Mr. Brown will be traveling to a few cities. He's actually on the plane as we speak. I spoke to him a little before the call, and he sends his loving regards to all of you and appreciates your time and presence here each and every Monday night. And I'm looking forward to hearing your voice again. Those of you who haven't connected with me on social media, just go straight to my website, click on all the social media icons, and you can find me there. That's destinydesignersuniversity.com, destinydesignersuniversity.com. So I look forward to staying connected with you. And thank you, Dr. Anthony T. Lapson, for being here tonight. For this conversation, we want you to go ahead and leap. Remember, as Mr. Brown has told us time and time again, most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss, but because they aim too low and hit. So <laughs> aim high, leap, and make this your best year yet. Look forward to hearing your voices again next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, Goodbye, Dr. Lefton. Goodbye. Thank you.